Live, I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today's the third Tuesday of the month, which means it's time for vinegar and spice and everything nice with our two favorite products. Nick DeVorn from Local Spicery. Well, he's not a product, he's a person. And Tommy Balsamic, Thomas Allen from California Balsamic. They're going to be making amazing recipes with their product. With Thomas, who's going to go first today, the recipes are from you guys. You send them in. If they're made on the air, you win. Well, you don't win. You select two free bottles in the flavor of your choice of California Balsamic. And today, Nick is going to be using his brand new spice. I hope I pronounce it right. Vignette. This tastes really, really good. In showing you vegetables from around the world. Please welcome Nick and Tommy. Hi guys, how are you? Good afternoon, well, Chef. Hey Nick, how's it going, my friend? It's going great, Thomas. You're looking well. Thank you, thank you. It's, it's the most exciting day of the week. It's Tuesday, which of course is bowling night. But if anybody hears the banging on our ceiling, we have roofers putting on a new roof as we speak above us. So I apologize for any distractions uh, there for today. That's funny that Tuesday's your bowling night because Tuesday's my trivia night. Oh, <laughs> we could do that next week. Bowling trivia. I know I'm on a team. And if anybody wants to join, <laughs> if you're not. local, we 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 got a vegan team and we're we're so, doing really great. Um, oh, so far, um, our yeah. Oh, fun, fun, fun. We're we've uh, in two weeks. Our bowling championships will uh, be on there, which we are going to be part of, and we'll give you a full update next month. Uh, if we win our championship in 28 years, I have never won uh, a championship. So hopefully this year will be the year. We'll see. Well, this is your turn. Thank you. I need it badly. Right. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> so what flavor of California balsamic are we featuring this month? So this month is teriyaki, one of our all-time most popular flavors with fresh, uh, with fresh garlic and lots of organic ginger. And of course, there's no soy sauce in this, so it's SOS free. And this is the flavor that I have to say, we've been saving this one for a couple of years because this is the flavor that got us started, you know, with you, Chef, five years ago. And uh, it's it's a flavor that will be near and dear to my heart forever and ever. And, you know, and it's still one of the best, especially for people that are strictly salt free. They can't even use the coconut aminos or, or things like that. I mean, it's it's amazing. I mean, you, we, you know, so we have a lot of meetups and we had a meetup last night at one of the Vietnamese restaurants and they do SOS free. And so you wouldn't believe how many people just take the little bottles that you give to free with any order going through my link to embellish their food. And it's usually teriyaki, but sometimes it's sweet heat. And, and those two have been in the top five best-selling flavors forever and ever. And it's 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 really, truly amazing uh, how popular the garlic flavors are because we use fresh organic garlic to make these. And, um, and that's why the powdered garlics or the minced garlic, ugh. I wouldn't use that if you paid me. It's just not the same flavor, texture, quality. And, and that's what we're all about is just doing small batch uh, mm -hmm. quality balsamic vinegars. You know, it's interesting to me how similar yet different Gilroy garlic and teriyaki are because I enjoy them both. But they're, 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 they may be similar, but they are extremely different. And it's the it's the ginger in it that really is just such an intense flavor, and and it just brings it all it takes it to a completely new tangent of flavor uh, instead of just garlic because we only put in just a little bit of peppers in the sweet heat and that's a totally different taste. Um, and the blaze and habanero, well, that's just too much peppers for me. I know you and Charles can handle that, but not uh, him, not uh, him. That's Dr. Gregor's oh, favorite. I, I, you know, sometimes okay. I have to put a little bit of sweet heat in the, in the blazing to top tone it down, but it is a really good flavor. Oh, I agree with you. It's too hot for me, but just one little taste tablespoon in a stir fry. Now that's doable. It just, you know, spreads it out enough to uh, give it flavor and, and just a, a little bit of heat. So, but we digress. And uh, so, all right. The, the roofers are outside looking in the window going, what's going on in there? They don't want to, they, they're seeing, they're, they're smelling the food that's in, the, that's in here that we just made moments ago. So, all right. So anyway, our first uh, recipe of the, today is a, uh, a teriyaki 
tahini tofu blend. And, um, and this is one that we want to uh, make sure that people understand. It starts off with a small spaghetti squash cooked, uh, baked, or done in the microwave. Well, we found that in the microwave, it's so much quicker than just baking it. But Chef, have you ever had a, a, a spaghetti squash in the microwave uh, with the holes that are punched in not big enough? You know, you know where this is going. Uh, you get some trees. We, uh, yeah, where it's going is it's going to be an explosion in your microwave. The, the bud. And sure enough, uh, that's exactly what happened. We put it in for after six minutes. It was uh, hissing and all there, and, you know, and uh, we just didn't puncture the the squash deep enough so the hole would be large enough to get that escaping steam, and it literally poof. And uh, it, it turned the microwave off, even though there was still a minute and a half left to go. Uh, and then it was you know, a little bit of cleanup time. And uh, but spaghetti squash is still tastes wonderful. It just, you know, just be aware if you're in the microwave, use a knife and put a nice deep, uh, you know, hole into the spaghetti squash in at least three or four places to get that uh, steam released, because obviously you don't want to do what we did earlier. So. Uh, there's a large onion that's uh, chopped up into pieces, eight ounces of cremini or any brown mushroom. We go to our farmer's market in Healdsburg on Saturday. Well, Ethel's, we're, we're, we have a booth there setting up, and there's a young man named Duncan who is selling absolutely tremendous, beautiful uh, mushrooms of wide variety. So we use oyster, cremini, shiitake, and two or three others uh, that were just a mixed blend of mushrooms that are in this dish today. So... That's what we used. Now, the for the tofu, uh, there is a co there are coating ingredients, and then there is the tahini sauce ingredients. So right now we're going to talk about the tofu coating ingredients. A block of extra firm tofu that's pressed and cubed, um, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, half a teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, two tablespoons of arrowroot powder or cornstarch, and a little bit of pepper. Now, for the, the tahini sauce, teriyaki tahini sauce ingredients are two tablespoons of teriyaki, a tablespoon of agave syrup or maple syrup, if you like, a tablespoon of liquid aminos, a teaspoon of ground Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of tahini, and a tablespoon of water and another pinch of black pepper. So you're just going to mix all those uh, wet ingredients up and the dry ingredients up. Now, directions. Saute the onions and mushrooms with water or liquid aminos and set them aside. Uh, add the add tofu coating ingredients to a bowl and mix, adding a half a tablespoon of the eru parter or the cornstarch at a time so it doesn't all get put in together too much. Add the tofu to the bowl and toss until they're fully coated. Easy. Uh, add the tofu to an air fryer on an even layer air fry at 400 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes and halfway through, uh, give them a shake and turn them over a little bit so they coat uh, or they're uh, cooked evenly because they get a nice little crisp uh, you know, on the outside of that, which is really wonderful. Make your te teriyaki tahini sauce by mixing all the sauce ingredients together until smooth. And then you're going to simply uh, serve the tofu, mushrooms and onions and the teriyaki tahini sauce over the cooked spaghetti squash. Thank you very much. And here is this bad boy right there. Simple and easy. And I will say that these little chunks of the tofu out there that are a little crispy with the tahini sauce, they're wonderful, especially when they're right out of the air fryer. I really like them. Last time we made this dish, I ate most of the tofu before I was supposed to. So that's recipe number one. Really easy. Be aware of the spaghetti squash. It can come back to bite you. All right. Recipe number two. This is from our good friend Eileen Mirsky. And this is a teriyaki eggplant. Now, this recipe calls for uh, two medium Asian eggplants. And, Chef, have you ever used the Asian eggplant? 
Yes. And as a matter of fact, the ones that are sometimes called Chinese or Japanese that are longer and thinner and a prettier shade of purple, I like them better because they have less seeds. Right. And and in doing that, um, where do you get them? Because we called every store from Ukiah down to Santa Rosa and nobody had them. Um, well, when I you can get them at the Asian markets. Did you try there? No, we didn't try. And I know there's one Asian market in Santa Rosa now that you mentioned that. Should have tried them. But um, anyway, so this one is made with a normal eggplant. We did peel the outside. We cut off both ends and then we just used a potato peeler and we peeled off the outside of it. And we took out the seeds. And uh, I have to say it worked beautifully. So that's an option for that one. All right. So the uh, teriyaki eggplant. Uh, two medium Asian eggplants, uh, mushrooms, 8 to 12 ounces of shiitake, oyster, white cremini, any combination. Go to Duncan's booth in Healdsburg on a Saturday morning and get your, as much as you need. Um, a tablespoon of minced ginger, um, a third of a cup of California teriyaki balsamic, and a third of a cup of water. And she's got a garnish on here of sesame seeds, two teaspoons, uh, a little bit of seaweed or the nori, and uh, an additional teriyaki if you need that. And with the uh, directions, roughly chop the eggplant and mushrooms into bite-sized pieces. The Asian eggplants, like you said, Chef, have a, a tender skin and do not need to be peeled. The more common eggplant generally have thicker skins and, and lots of seeds. Heat up a saucepan to medium heat, then add, if you're this one, she used a little bit of sesame oil, which we're not using. Um, a dry saute will work um, if you if you need to do that, or a little bit of water. Saute the eggplants for four to five minutes. Uh, add the mushrooms and ginger and saute for another two minutes. Add the teriyaki balsamic and water. Give a good stir, cover, and reduce heat to medium-low and cook about 10 minutes. Uh, plate and garnish with sesame seeds and chopped seaweed. And serve with a side dish of side dish of rice if you like to do that. And that is the name of that tent. Now she also said the roasted seaweed snacks are now available at most stores, uh, which is an easy way to get a single serving for less than a dollar. And the shiitake mushrooms give a nice chewy texture to this dish, um, and uh, and any variety will work. So we did that. All right. And the teriyaki. Egg food plant that with the rice on there is all right there. Easy and squeezy. So these are just super easy dishes. We'll be taking these to the warehouse uh, this afternoon to let all the employees try these as well. But we're going to keep a little bit more of the uh, the third dish and the first one, the tofu one, which is uh, flavor, the one that I especially enjoy. So that's nice. And finally, uh, we're going old school with our third and final recipe today, Chef, which is one that, you know, we talked about this earlier, uh, being the teriyaki that you, that we sent you um, samples of five years ago. And you said that if you didn't like it, you wouldn't tell anyone. But if you did like it, you'd tell everybody. And you would make a video at one point if you really liked it. And here is the uh, world famous pineapple unfried rice that got things going, which uh, on your own your health is on page 151 here. So we went and uh, just uh, borrowed your recipe again and made it up here. So it's on there forever. And as you know, here we go. World famous Chef AJ pineapple unfried rice. That's a good one. No need to no need for takeout when you can quickly make a much healthier version of take in at home. The ingredients: a large sweet onion chopped, six peeled garlic cloves finely chopped, a thumb-sized knob of fresh ginger finely chopped, a thumb-sized knob of fresh turmeric finely chopped, four ounces of shredded carrots, about two cups. Uh, four ounces of shredded purple cabbage, about two and a half cups. A 20-ounce can of pineapple chunks in its own juice, drained in liquid reserve. Six cups of cooked brown rice. And a half a cup of teriyaki balsamic. And a little cilantro, if you like. 
Preparation. Dry saute the onion until nicely browned, adding water or the unsweetened pineapple juice if needed. Add the garlic, ginger, and turmeric uh, and saute for another minute or two. Add the cabbage and carrots and cook until soft. Add the rice, the pineapple, and cook until heated through. If the dish appears dry or needs more liquid, add the remaining pineapple juice. Stir in the balsamic vinegar and a little bit of fresh cilantro if desired. And the chef's note, try cooked quinoa in place of the rice. Well, that's easy squeezy. But chef, I'm a big fan of the brown. We use brown rice for this one. And we put in all of the pineapple powder because that just made the dish wonderfully moist and uh, just full of flavor. This has been a great recipe for years and years, and it's going to continue that way. So well, thank page you. 151. You know, Thomas, I just uh, looked up the nutritional information in teriyaki sauce, and one tablespoon has 700 milligrams of sodium. And so we're using eight <laughs> tablespoons in that recipe. And how many milligrams of sodium in California balsamic? A big zero, thank you. Exactly. Big difference. And not to mention the that sugar is a... in teriyaki sauce. Yeah. Well, that's extraordinary. Yeah. And, and that's a dish that people have been talking about for years. It's been... On our site, uh, uh, under the uh, the recipe page, and of course, it's been on it's on your one of your videos. How many videos are you up to now? Two thousand and what? Well, I'm almost I mean, uh, actually Friday will be my two thousandth episode of Chef AJ Live. But 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 I've ha I had so many before. I probably I don't know three or four thousand. It's crazy. Exactly, it is extraordinary how the your your page and website and subscriber base has just grown dramatically in the last five years. Extraordinary. The pandemic, baby. Yeah, I hear you out there. So those are uh, our three recipes for today. If you have a, a, a recipe you'd like to send us next month, the flavor of the month is the jalapeno and lime. So uh, be, by all means, uh, send us a recipe for that. And if you do send a recipe and we use it, We'll send two eight ounce bottles of uh, your choice as a thank you gift. Oh my uh, God. For... I got a, I, I don't want to be on my own show, but I got a great recipe for it. I'm going to send it anyway. And you either use it or you don't. It's actually from the new book, believe it or not, from the dessert cookbook. I'll let you decide. Oh, fantastic. All right. Well, Chef, you know, twist our arm out there. We'll probably end up using it just it's, because I served it at a like party it. the other day and people went nuts for it. I'm, I'm going to send it to you just because it's so good. Oh, wonderful. Oh, then life is good, chef. Life is good. Are you going to be appearing in any festivals in the near future? If people want to see you in person, seeing you in person is the best thing because they can taste all mm -hmm. the flavors. So if you want to see both Thomas and Nick in person, get your early bird ticket to the live your best life conference at Weimar with all the wonderful plant-based doctors speaking because they'll both be there with their wonderful spices and vinegars. Yep. Uh, Chef, we have one festival at the end of this month in downtown Clayton, California, uh, on the East Bay, uh, about 20 minutes from Walnut Creek uh, is where we'll be at the end of this month on the Saturday, Sunday. Um, that's the next show we'll, that we'll be at. Nice. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to Thomas. And now we will say hello to Nick. But Nick is going to have to unmute because I muted him because there was a little bit of uh, noise coming from his uh, microphone while Thomas was appearing. And Nick has a brand new flavor. It's called Vignette. And the ingredients are, let's see, ginger, chilies, onion, mint, lemon verbena, shallots chives and it is organic hey nick how are you i gotta add the number one ingredient you 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 glossed over but fennel this is oh, a fennel yeah. bomb that's because i don't ha didn't have my glasses on <laughs> and you're right fennel you know what it, it's so interesting because we were talking about this i do not like celery but i love fennel and they're in the same family mm -hmm. so this uh this blend has got it's got a bit of a history it's one that we originally did for an italian restaurant but the chef owner of that restaurant was uh 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 traditionally uh trained as a french chef and as i was working on the uh, on uh, today's project which are all uh uh, uh pickled vegetables 
Uh, the one that I'm using it on actually is the French carrots because although it is a very Italian blend, it really is very French as well. And you can, you can tell by the ingredients. It's, uh, you know, super, 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 super brightly aromatic, spicy, uh, sweet, um, uh, but still kind of, uh, kind of herbal. Uh, it is amazing in soups. Uh, you know, my wife who, uh, who does, uh, you know, probably the second greatest stump soup in the world outside of Tom Kramer. <laughs> I just got a look, uh, 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 uses this and has been using it for a while religiously. Uh, it's quite delicious and I uh, hope everybody gets a chance to try it. Um, what do you, what do you recommend it on mostly? Oh man. Um, you know, it's like we say this a lot, but it's really good on, on cauliflower, any kind of oven roasted vegetable. Uh, it's great on, uh, it's great in soups. Uh, I'm using it in, uh, in the, uh, in the pickled vegetables. Uh, it it really could be in anything kind of a spice. Nice. What I what can hey, AJ? Can I bring Thomas in? I wanted to to bring Thomas in to ask him a few questions because there's a little overlap between what he does and what I'm doing today. Of course, we always welcome Thomas back. Thomas, would you please come back? Paging Thomas. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> More calling Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, so uh, so yeah. today I'm going to be I'm going to be doing pickled vegetables. Uh, it was kind of a uh, you know uh, it hit me from a number of recipes I've done recently uh, that call for different types of pickled vegetables, and I started thinking about how you know how they exist in kind of every culture around the around the globe, and I've I've gone into a really really deep dive into it, and then it dawned on me that. Uh, uh, I'm going to be here today with, you know, like the world's greatest living expert on uh, on uh, on vinegars, right? The, uh, uh, the the Tamir of Tar, and wanted to kind of uh, pick your brain a little bit. And and you know, I would have loved to have used uh, uh, California balsamic vinegars, but you don't, you know, you don't carry the uh, you know the basic uh, you know grape based vinegars. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to. See if you had any thoughts on what you like to use in uh, in pickling, particularly particularly pickling vegetables, not you know not the really watery uh, uh, pick uh, cucumbers. So what we found over the years that the we almost never hear from customers saying that they're using California balsamic for pickling, generally because the acidity is so low, it just needs to be more tart. And the white balsamic, dark balsamic at only four, four and a half percent acidity just doesn't generally work for pickling as much as the uh, higher acidity ones do. Uh, people will obviously put them over things as a finishing sauce, but not so much uh, for pickling anything as much as my darling bride, Ethel, who's in Hungarian, and her family pickled everything with uh, the white distilled vinegar. And, you know, a little bit of sugar and white stones vinegar as a kid, they pickled everything. But uh, as far as using our products, I don't recall anyone ever saying that they've done that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, most commercial culinary vinegars now are hidden around five, maybe four uh, percent acidity. Um, and, you know, for me, trying to, to, to uh, to pull these recipes together, some of which require sweetness, a lot of them ask for, you know, for cane sugar. Uh, I it dawned on me, and I'd wish I'd, I wish I'd done it before this, that uh, balsamic would have been a great way to maintain a higher level of acidity without, you know, having to, to blend as much water in, but uh, you'd still get that innate sweetness. You know, I think though it could be a, even a possibility would be a combination of some of the, the strong high acidity balsamic and a yeah. little bit of our uh, white balsamic because that again, like you said, would give the sweetness without the sugar. Yeah, yeah. I've, you know, the, the more I've read about this, and it all it all comes down to acidity or pH, and you know, keeping it uh, you know below four point six basically. But you know, when you're starting with something that uh, you know, I'm not even sure what is the uh, what is the pH at uh, at five percent. Um, you know, starting with something pretty high, usually we cut it with some, 
some uh, water. I was thinking, you know, why couldn't you cut it with, uh, you know, fruit juice and you'd get some sweetness and some color as well. But also, I, I, I'm definitely going to try this. We're going to come back, you and me, and we'll do a we'll do some pickled vegetables with balsamic and with other ways to pull some sweetness out. You, you know, and Nick, it's fantastic. I, with, sorry, was, Chef, go ahead. I was, no, sorry about that. But what I was going to say, I I don't know if they're truly pickled, but I have used California balsamic to make something pickle like. So what I've done, and there's videos on my YouTube channel a long time ago on a mandolin, for example, I've thinly sliced onions and I've marinated them for days in the refrigerator in ruby mm -hmm. red onion or, or Persian cucumbers in, in crisp cucumber. So I don't know if they're traditional pickles because of what pickling spices, but they're sure really good. But now you both just gave me the idea because Nick, I have your pickling spice. I bought it to make vegan corned beef and cabbage, but I, I never made it. But I think that if we took your pickling spice and some of his vinegars, I think we could get the the effect that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Or, or as, as you'll see in my presentation, there are a lot of the, the pickling is a great way to showcase almost any spice blend. It really, I thought it was you know people people tell me they want to come here to learn how to cook with spices, and uh, you know pickles are a great way to use the the different blends that are on your shelf because there's a lot of way you know to push push the flavor one direction or another by the seasoning. Nice. So, okay, we're, we're going to do that. That'll be fun. That's a date. Um, today, I'm here from Las Vegas, Nevada, where it's hot. And uh, I'm here to uh, to celebrate my father-in-law's 89th birthday. So everyone should say, happy birthday, Ed. It's on Thursday. He's waving in the background. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to do a quick uh, you know, quick quick overview of a deep dive that Evelyn and I did recently on on. Uh, uh, pickled vegetables, uh, you know, the, the, the line being, we didn't do anything like cucumbers, which has a, you know, they have a high water content innate to the, to the cucumber. So you have to, it's a little different, uh, process. Um, I did, uh, this started actually, you know, uh, on, on your show, Chef AJ, I did a, uh, uh, I did, uh, uh, El Salvador and pupusas once, and we made the cortita, which is, uh, you know, an El, Salvo, El Salvadoran pickled vegetable. Um, Evelyn and I right now are kind of trying to perfect our banh mi. And, uh, and that was when I, uh, you know, we started looking at different recipes to make do shua, which is the, uh, the Vietnamese pickled vegetables that you use uh, on your banh mi sandwiches. Um, and, you know, I've always just been a fan. We, uh, we go through a ton of, uh, of pickled vegetables. We make them like every week. You know, one of the, questions people ask about pickled vegetables is how long will they last? And, and, you know, my answer is, you know, they'll last a lot longer than they last in our kitchen because, you know, we'll make a, a quart and it'll, that, you know, that lasts two or three days. Uh, we love them. They're delicious. Uh, and they're incredibly healthful. And, uh, from the standpoint of, uh, of eating vegan, uh, for guys like me that like a big flavor, uh, you know, you get a big flavor and, uh, and it's also uh, helpful, you know, acids, uh, any acid is uh, helpful in, uh, in weight loss because uh, well, for two reasons. One is it, it, uh, it's, it retards the, uh, the breakdown of carbohydrates, but it also has a high uh, degree of, uh, of satiety. Um, so what we're going to be, what we're going to be talking about, or, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start right in and talk through, uh, uh, how we make these because uh, we have on our website, uh, you know, this is, I'm, I'm looking out on the golf course at the links and I have to remember the links. Uh, localspicery.com slash blog gets you to our blog. Localspicery.com slash Chef AJ is the best way to enter our site because first of all, you start with uh, Chef AJ's page, which has uh, AJ's favorite spice blends. It has a special button that we created that takes you to a landing page that extracts all of the, the uh, uh, salt-free blends, SOS-free blends. It's on there. Um, and uh, uh, and if you enter that way, you get uh, two free samples from us. You can request them, but they're you know small, about a, about a tablespoon, enough for most recipes to, to try something out. Uh, but one of the things you're going to find out is you know, we put up a recipe, but the recipe doesn't really have any quantities. And the reason why, I'm going to begin with this one here. This is this is the Italian giardiniera, 
absolutely gorgeous, absolutely delicious. I think most people have had it before. Um, giardiniera in Italian, uh, it's a beautiful word that means uh, uh, crap from my from my garden. Um, it's it's it is whatever you have. So you know, to write a recipe and then have to run to the store and, and find this or that is kind of contrary to the whole idea. You know, pickling vegetables begins with what are the vegetables that you've got that you want to pickle and, uh, and what's the strategy that you want to follow in terms of, in terms of, uh, in terms of your brine and, uh, and, uh, and your flavors. Um, so what we do is we start with the vegetables, you know, we'll, we'll chop them up and get them ready. Uh, when we do the brine, we don't, we don't measure the brine in cups and ounces. We'll do it in the jar. You know, usually we're thinking, you know, either a 50 50 or, a, or a, you know, two to one. And we'll just, we'll just pour it right in the jar to measure. Uh, I'll usually fill the jar about 75% to allow for the, the space that the vegetables are going to take up. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really, really very easy and very fun. You just have to dive in and start doing it. We, uh, we, we uh, like I said, we do it all the time. Um, so we're going to start with the, uh, with the jardiniera and, uh, uh, you know, the jardini jardiniera, as I showed you, it's got, you know, big chunks. It's got some cauliflower. It's got some, uh, some red bell pepper. It's got some, some whole garlic cloves. It's got some green beans. Um, jardiniera, uh, I'm using, uh, a two to one, two parts water, one part, uh, uh, um, white wine vinegar. Uh, and for, for a seasoning, we're using our uh, our regular Italian herb blend, which I think most of you guys have or have tried. Uh, Giardiniera, you want kind of an, an herby, uh, uh, you know, herb forward flavor. I threw in some some additional whole spices in there, some black peppercorn and some uh, 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 some fennel seed and some um, anise seed. Uh, uh, but that's really about it with the uh, jardiniera one thing you want to think about because you are dealing with bigger chunks um uh you might want to consider parboiling which is just you know for two or three minutes partially boiling some of the uh some of the vegetables to uh um to soften them a little bit second one i'm going to just talk about uh this is the cortito the cortito is uh is uh it's from uh, El Salvador. This is the slaw that's uh, usually served on top of, uh, of pupusas. Uh, has a high content of, uh, of cabbage, as you can see. Uh, it's got uh, uh, red onions. It's got some jalapeno peppers and a little bit of, of carrot. Actually, you know, it is absolutely beautiful. And for this one, for the uh, cortito, uh, again, I'm using a two to one, two parts water, one part uh, uh, um, uh, just just white, uh, you know, just regular white vinegar. And uh, for the spice, uh, for this one and the next one, which are you know both kind of Central American in character, I use my Mex mix, which is driven by uh, uh, Mexican oregano. Um, it's got a little bit of cumin. It's got some some. Uh, some fennel and it's got some achiote seed. Uh, the, uh, the, the next one, the escabeche, which is uh, a very traditional Mexican, uh, uh, um, pickled vegetable. This is, you know, you go to your favorite Mexican restaurant and on the side of your plate, you have some pickled vegetables just sitting there. And that's, that's the escabeche. And for escabeche, I usually uh, will put whole garlic chunks. In fact, Pickled garlic is amazing. I mean, I could just sit here and eat in front of you. I hope you don't mind if I eat. I've got radishes. I've got carrots. Um, uh, I put in, you know, different types of, uh, of green onions. And uh, for this one, we actually blended two different types of vinegar because I started with, with the cider vinegar and the flavor was just a little bit too strong. So I did cider vinegar and, uh, and white wine vinegar. And, I, and, you know, those two combined is one part to two parts water. Um, the uh, the third one is the uh, the French carrots or the uh, the carrot rapine, uh, which is usually a uh, you know a very simple dish. It's almost entirely made of uh, of carrots. Uh, 
Um, we also put in some uh, some shallots and some red onions and and some pearl onions. It's, uh, pearl onions uh, uh, pickled are amazing as well. I'm just going to keep eating while I go through this. The uh, carrot rapine, we 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 use the vignette as you talked about. It's our new uh, our new blend. And then the final one, which uh, you'll probably be hearing from me in the near future, which is the doshua. This is a Vietnamese pickled vegetable. This one is typically, and that's what I did here, uh, three main ingredients, daikon radish, jalapeno pepper, and carrots. Um, you know, the big thing with the, uh, and the, the, uh, with this one, it's a, uh, it's a two to one with, uh, with a, uh, a sodium free rice vinegar. Um, this one likes to be sweet and, uh, I really couldn't get a flavor that I thought was appropriate without some sweetness. And I really didn't want to put sugar in it. So what I did is I took three dates and chopped them up a little bit. And I threw them in the blender with the vinegar and just pureed it until, uh, you know, there were no more parts of, of date to be found. It does give it a little bit of a color. It's not a perfectly clear liquid. But I did get the sweetness I wanted without using the sugar. It's delicious. And uh, in the near future, you're going to see we'll be rolling out our uh, our banh mi sandwich uh, uh, recipe. We're going to be having that for lunch. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Nick. Nick, oh, if you don't yeah. mind, uh, just because I don't want to forget this question that Carol posted in the yeah. chat: Can the vinegars be used for another veggie batch? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, can they be reused? There's no reason why not. So let's let's just talk a little bit about about the, about food safety in relative to uh, to pickling. We're basically taking three different strategies, which is part of the reason why this is so safe. Uh, the first one is we're we're using we're using acidity, and as long as the the uh, the, the pH is below four point six, uh, then uh, you're 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 safe from pathogens. The second thing that we use is heat. Because uh, when we blend the vinegars, we heat them to a full boil and we let them sit and continue to simmer at that temperature for three minutes. 90 seconds is what's required, but at that point, you've wiped out any pathogens. So that's two strategies you've employed. And the third one, because we don't put up vegetables, and, and I think the question comes from someone who also is doing the same thing. They're doing uh, uh, refrigerator pickles like we do. Uh, we refrigerate, and the refrigeration also protects you. So as long as you're reheating the uh, the liquid, uh, you should be fine. Um, if you wanted to be a little safer, you could add a little extra vinegar to increase the acidity. Uh, if you're really nervous, you could get some pH strips and check the pH. But uh, you, you get to a point where you can taste it and you get a pretty good idea of where you are. And the answer is, yeah, you can. At some point, though, because the flavor of the uh, the liquid takes on so much flavor of the vegetables, uh, you're going to want to want to have a, a fresh batch. Uh, um, the other thing, what we do a lot of times, we'll save the uh, we'll save the brine from the pickles, and uh, we'll just thicken them with uh, tahini. tahini. There's what else? Is mustard. We did one with mustard, one with tahini, and it makes a great dressing. So that's another way to to reuse the the liquid. That's a really good question. Um, and that was the next thing that I wanted to get into, which is the food safety element of it, because people, you know, I, I get asked questions about two things. One is, how come you're using two parts water to one part vinegar when there's, you know, all over the web, it says the safest thing to do is do one part to one part. But at, at two to one, you're still uh, uh, below the 4.6. It's six. It's still safe. Uh, uh, if you're nervous at all, you can add a little more uh, vinegar. Or like I said, you can test. Um the uh, uh, I think that's that. Oh, I don't think I said this for the uh, for the seasoning in the in the uh, for the uh, uh, Vietnamese pickles. We're using the Chinese five spice. Uh, usually in these pickles, you would put a little bit of star anise and uh, and some uh, some Saigon cinnamon. Uh, both of those are ingredients in the in the uh, Chinese five spice, and you you're also pulling the uh, uh, Szechuan peppercorn and some some cumin and some other umami flavors. It works quite quite well. Um, so uh, so go out there, uh, make some mistakes and and try 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 making some of these pickles. You know, you you were mentioning AJ uh, our pickling spice 
Interestingly, I've got five types of pickles here without using our pickling spice. Uh, uh, we use our pickling spice all the time. That was our gateway drug in terms of getting into uh, uh, pickling vegetables. Um, uh, but you know, these are this is just kind of to demonstrate different ways to use different flavors that you have. I mean, you could you could easily use your uh, uh, one of your curries, like a Vaduvan curry, to make a a curry kind of a a flavored pickled vegetable. Uh, you know, you could put in the uh, the Xinyang if you wanted to go with a with a Cantonese Chinese kind of a flavor. You could do the Sole della Toscana to give it a, a northern Italian kind of a flavor. Um, and uh, uh, it, it works really well. It's a great way to play and explore with the spices that you have in your ca in your cabinet. Uh, we have the the recipe up on our uh, up on our blog right now. Within a week, ten days, we'll have uh, we'll have a series of uh, of reels showing how to make each one of these. If you want to follow the reels, start with the giardiniera because that's going to have the full instructions on how to do it. The rest are all really fast. Great. Well, thank you. I'm going to try this. This is fantastic. Cool. So here's another thing. You know, you you ask yourself, why is it that uh, that pickled vegetables are popular all over the world? And you know, the uh, uh, the earliest uh, earliest known example of pickling uh, from the archaeological record is about four thousand years old, from 2500 BC in Sumeria. Uh, but it really became popular in the uh, in the age of discovery. Uh, Christopher Columbus used pickled vegetables uh, as a way to uh, uh, protect his crew from scurvy, and he actually planted special gardens in America just to grow vegetables, primarily cucumbers, but uh, but in order to pickle to feed his crew. And it was that was then kind of adopted by seafarers, and uh, this is part of you know, the explosion of why we see certain types of vegetables all over the world because they're being planted so that they can be they can be used by mariners to avoid scurvy. But also, you know, the popularity of pickled vegetables. I think it came from the seafarers beginning in the in the 15th century. Cool. Yeah. History's fun. Yeah, because regular pickles, I mean there can be more sodium than a person should have in a day in like one pickle. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. And I mean, the only reason for that is, uh, uh, you know, if you if you want to have a uh, uh, a fermented pickle, which which does help you with your uh, with your gut health. But you're right. The salt level goes way high, which is why we like to do just these simple uh, uh, refrigerator pickles. Which one? Hmm. Mm. Evelyn wants me to point out some other health benefits. Pickled vegetables, um, I mentioned earlier, it helps reduce uh, blood sugar because it inhibits the processing of carbohydrates. Uh, it's used as an appetite su suppressant. Uh, um, it's a minimal processing way to, uh, minimally processed way to eat vegetables that have a very, very strong flavor. Uh, uh, very high in vitamin uh, A, vitamin K, and in antioxidants. Uh, so it's a good thing to do. Nice. Yeah, and they're, they they go great with everything, on salads, with a sandwich, as a snack. Throw, throw, throw it in a roll, throw it in a bowl. It, yeah, no, they're great. We use them all the time. I'll uh, I'll, I'll tell you later how my uh, how our banh mi came out, but we're, uh, we're having a lot of fun with that too. Great. Well, thanks so much, Nick. It's great to see you, AJ. Same here. I hope you'll come to an event soon. Planning on it. I can't wait. Well, Definitely coming in July. For sure. Well, hopefully you'll come to the one in April too. You know, you can even bring your wares, you know, when we get back to the outdoor place that we meet, you know, if you, any of you guys are interested, just join my meetup because we meet a lot up here for pop okay. parties and things like that. So thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back a little bit earlier tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time for... Dr. Stefan Esser, and he will be talking about heart disease 2.0. Take care.